You guys, welcome to number three of the career mode randomizer. And to start off this episode, we have actually got FC Cologne, a pretty good team. They've got a lot of players that go to like an 80 plus rating. But unfortunately, as this series is only three games long, we're probably not going to be able to get them to get to their potential. So looking at the leaderboard on the right hand side, so far we are top with 13 points. Then Callum in second with 11, only two points away. So we do need to pick up as many points as possible. ETO in third and then fourth, we've got Mr. FIFA Cam with seven points and uh, in bottom, unfortunately, Drum Rostin. So, yeah, he's going to have to make up those points. So, looking at the calendar now, as you can see, we've got Stuttgart to kick off the season. Then we've got Wolfsburg. Then we've got Hamburg. So, it's probably a, quite a tough start. Like, you look at some of the teams in my second month, I'd say they're a lot easier. Like, Stuttgart uh, and Wolfsburg, really good teams. Hamburg, not quite as good, but still have some decent players in their lineup. So, um, it's going to be interesting to see if we can get a few points, obviously, at the moment. I'm in a pretty good position, so um, picking up some more points would be really, really nice. So, looking at the uh, Cologne lineup, it's actually quite a decent team. It'd actually be a really nice career mode team to do because a lot of youngsters in this team do go to like an 84 rated player. But unfortunately, as this series is only like three games long, we're never really going to hit that potential. So, looking at our shortlist, we've mainly got wingers slash centre attacking midfielders slash we've got um, Kuyate from West. Um, I think that like, he would be a really nice um, bringing the ball forwards from deep Kuyati would with his pace and with his strength. So, yeah, we just put a load of bins in for these players. Uh, Eunice Mali from, um, I think that's Mainz anyway. Really good player, actually. I, I kind of would like to bring him into the club if we can. But he is quite expensive as he is only 23 years old and uh, 78 rated. Same with Mane, put the same deal in. And um, it would be a bit of a shame if we did lose our right mid. Uh, Risse, I think that's his name anyway, maybe it's Risse, I'm not too sure. Um, but Mainz actually do accept the 8 million plus Risse. So it does make me feel like, have I put a little bit too much into this deal? Like he is only valued at 6.5 million. Um, so putting like, what, maybe like 12 million into the deal? Maybe that's a little bit too much. Same with Marnie, he is a little bit more worth than um, Marley. But still, he's on quite a bit of wage, obviously 60, gr 60 grand a week. It would mean we wouldn't really have any other money to spend on any other players. So, yeah, we just put in some contracts in here for Honda and Mane and obviously Mali. They're, they are really good players and obviously good in either the centre attack in mid position or out wide. So, we are going to counter that offer for Zoli. He does actually go to an 80 rated player, but I just don't have the time. He, he may have got to like 74 by the start of the season, but I doubt we're going to need any strikers. So, looking at this contract, I don't know if Mane will actually accept it. Obviously, we don't have that much money to like uh, negotiate with so we really can't put too many bids in for him so obviously we're gonna have to try and get another player so I'm putting this 4 million plus dollar adding up to about 6 million for Soriano from Sampdoria really good youngster he's looking like he's probably gonna go to Juventus or something in the summer window but yeah we're gonna put a bid in here for um, Kuyate just because this midfield it needs a little bit more pace in that holding midfielder role and as we are losing Layman, the old guy, is like 50 pace. Kuyate would be a nice replacement for quite a cheap price at only like 3 million ish, sort of like that round uh, range. That would be a really, really nice player to bring in. So, putting another bid in here for uh, James Ward Prowse for uh, Osako plus 3 million, adding up to about, um, what's that, 5.7 million. So, we should be able to luckily get this bid accepted. I'm not too sure, as he is 20 years old, maybe Southampton will want a little bit more money, but. We're actually going to try and do a straight swap here for Risse, the uh, right midfielder. I'm not too sure if it is Risse, Risse, whatever it is. I'm just going to call him Risse because John Honorisa does have a, uh, what are they called, accent on the top of it. So, um, yeah, we'll call him Risse. So, yeah, we're putting a new improved bid for Soriano there. 5 million plus our Sacco, adding up to about 7.7-ish. I'm not too sure if that's right or not. But nevertheless, we're going to put a bid in here for Thomas Rosicki. He's in his last year of his contract. Obviously, if this was a proper career mode, I probably wouldn't go for him because he does quickly di uh, go down in ratings. But as it's only three games, players like Rajiski could be quite handy. So we're going into the contract now for Kiyoti. He's only on 30 grand a week, so that's actually really nice. Same with um, Matt Ritchie. He has been accepted for Risse. Not too sure if we could just like keep both of them because at the moment we've only got three um, wingers. So maybe just adding uh, Ritchie. And uh, keeping Rissi, I'm not too sure if that would be a little bit more beneficial. But yeah, we're going into the contract stage for Soriano and of course uh, Rizzisky there. And as you can see on the screen now, we have accepted Kuyate for a very cheap price at 2.7 million plus. Some goalkeeper, I think he was worth about 600 grand. So 
Looking at the contract now, Richie's wanting a little bit more money, which is a little bit frustrating because I didn't really want to get rid of him, um, get rid of Risse. But in the end, what I decided to do is put a 3.5 million plus, the money that he wanted in the wage. And um, yeah, we actually managed to sell a couple of youngsters that are worth about half a million. So we managed to keep Risse and Richie. So I know that doesn't look the clearest, like I could have just shown you me putting the 3.5 million pound bid in, but I just wanted to show I really wanted Matt Ritchie and uh, in the end I did decide just to put the money in for him because only 3.5 million it's not really going to knock off too much so we do get a bid in here from AC Milan for uh, Tim Horn I want to keep him I think it's Tim O'Horn I'm not too sure if it's just Tim Horn but nevertheless we do bring in a brand new signing there in Soriano he is actually a really good youngster in the Italian ranks at the moment he's looking like he's probably going to go to Juventus in real life and I think He'd be a really good player in this team. I felt like he'd bring a lot of flair in that midfield at the moment. There's not really that creative um, talent that Soriano will bring. So, yeah, I think that's a really nice signing. And for only 7 million, that's quite a bargain, I'd say. He does go up to about an 83 rate player. But unfortunately, in this career mode, he may only go up to like a 77, if that. So, going into our first game now against Stuttgart, probably the second easiest out of the three. Um, so it's going to be an interesting one. We are going to go with that purpley blue kit. We've got three kits, and that's always nice with the team, obviously. Um, in the Derby County career, we've got three kits, and it just makes it a little bit more interesting when you've got a bit more of an option. So I was just deciding what I was, go f uh, what I was going to go for in the midfield, because at the moment we've got two holding midfielders, but that's what I'll go for in the end. And looking at the Stuttgart lineup for today's game, they've actually got some pretty good players in two in the defence, Dai, Genter, Grosskreutz. Harnik out wide and uh, the striker Gizanek. He's really good, so that's a really solid lineup. But the Cologne lineup as well. I've made some good improvements of it, obviously, so far. The two midfielders and uh, Matt Ritchie on the bench at the moment. So, yeah, we can always bring him off the bench and hopefully create some chances. So, as you can see there, we went up for a header with uh, Modest, uh, Modesti. I'm not too sure how you say his name. 78 rated striker. He is like our best attacking player at the moment. And unfortunately, he's got a big injury. He's made us pause the game and uh, force the injury so we go into the 87th minute of the match here Hector bringing the ball forwards going into the box and then Kuyata with an attacking run first time shot puts it into the back of the net makes it 1-0 and it does mean we get the three points in the 90th minute of the match so really lucky that we got away with um, drawing our first game obviously it's a good way to start off the season with a win against Stuttgart and that is how it does end it wasn't the most eventful of games apart from the injury and uh, the late late goal there really wasn't too much in it. Obviously, we had two shots. They had three. Hector at the left-back position, he's absolutely insane. So, obviously, unfortunately, um, Modesti, the striker, he is going to be out injured for three months. So, it means we do need to bring in a new striker a position. I felt like we didn't need to improve, but we are going to put a few bids in here. For Cameron Drew, he's around the 75 uh, position. Same with Jamie Vardy, a similar deal with that centre-back, um, Mavraj and... Um, just all the money that we have, I just don't have an option at this point now. We, we need to get this player in because we've only got two games left and uh, we've only got one striker and it's Hoisner, who's only 73 rated. So bringing in a, bit, a little bit more quality, maybe but a bit more beneficial. But as the injury happened in the first game, we unfortunately don't have enough time to bring in the striker for the second game. So that striker is going to have one game to potentially get us some goals. So that's, that's the craziness of this series where... If you don't make the signings in time, then they may not be used at all like uh, Bryson in the second episode. So we've gone for a similar lineup. We've gone for Jocic instead of the holding midfielder. I can't remember his name. In the midfield, just to bring us a, bit, a little bit more attacking presence. And obviously, Hoysner going into the striker position, looking at the Wolfsburg lineup. A really solid team. Obviously, Draxler, Kruse, Caliugri, um Verina, G Gilavogi. Gustavo Rodriguez, some really solid players. So we go into the 41st minute of the match here, putting the ball through for Jocic on his debut, puts it into the top left-hand corner and makes it one in the game. A great way to kick off the game just before half-time uh, against Wolfsburg because if we went into that second half, nil-nil, then the course of the game could have changed quite nicely. But we go into the 73rd minute of the match here, March with uh, March, sorry, with the header, makes it 2-0, doubles our lead and... Um, Puts us in a really solid position going into the last 15 minutes. Wolfsburg were really, really good. And obviously we've got Tim Horn in goal. And it just shows how good he is. And then we go into the 90th minute of the match here. And as you can see in the top left, a wonderful strike from Matt Ritchie. I brought him off the bench, put him on the left-hand side. But the really nice addition to the Bundesliga 
is it actually tells you what like minute you are in the three minutes. So say for example you're in a Premier League um, game and it goes into extra time. It doesn't actually tell you what second or minute or anything, but in the Bundesliga it tells you in like the first minute of 10 seconds and stuff like that. So that's a really nice addition and that, that was actually a really solid 3-0 victory. Obviously the annoying thing is with this thing, we're only, we're only going to have one more game now and I decided to go for Cameron Jerome just because he's worth a little bit more than Vardy and I haven't actually tried him out this year so it was a little bit of a gamble but at the same time I wasn't too bothered because he's only got one game to prove his um, worth so he's not really going to have the best of opportunities and is he really going to get into this team um, and get goal straight away? Probably not. So going into our final game now against Hamburg a little bit of a shame that um, our big striker got injured in like the first 30 minutes of the game. He probably could have carried us through this series but at the moment it's been quite tough so going into the game now against Townberg final one of the episode if we could pick up another three points then that means we get nine points and that would be incredible but we'll have to see how Cameron Drone does perform up front obviously going into the team straight away we may as well use him if we have bought him looking at the Hamburg line we've got Dijkmaier, Adler, Holtby, um, Aaron Hull, uh, Nikolai Mora and uh, Losonga up front quite good players Unfortunately, it's a nil-nil draw. So what I'm just going to do is show you some absolute sitters that Cameron Drome has missed. I'm like, how have you done that? How have you missed the target from there? That, like if that was the um, Austrian striker that we have, Heusner, he'd probably score that. But no, Cameron Drome, he's decided to uh, miss. And I'm like, really? I, I was just screaming at that point. I was like, have you really just missed that Cameron Drome? I've brought you in. For a lot of money, I paid over the odds for his uh, wage as well because I had literally no time to negotiate with him. And um, yeah, he, he just missed an absolute sit. And unfortunately, we've only got seven points. But I say unfortunately, that that's actually a really good performance. Obviously, to get the 3-0 win against Wolfsburg, that was kind of lucky because they did stick it on all-out attack. But nevertheless, if you did enjoy this episode, make sure you do smash the like button. We should be in quite a good position going into the next episode and I believe it will either be, I think it's the BBVA with obviously Barcelona and Real Madrid. Hopefully we get a bit more of a better team. So if you did enjoy this episode, make sure you do smash the like button. Go check out all the links down below. Subscribe if you are new to the channel and see you soon. Bye.